minority success story in the Midwest. It's an oxymoron, just the sentence of it. And what I want to talk to you is a little bit deep, a little bit tense, which is a perspective. A perspective on our choices and what we do plays a major role into where we can go. But before I jump into that, let me backtrack a little bit and talk to you a little bit more about how I got here, a little bit of my journey, and what really stemmed from how I'm wired and how I operate. So when I was very little, my mom did a fantastic job of making sure we understood certain con concepts in life. She was pretty much preparing us into a war that we were going to have to b battle. And one of the things was, if you're going to do something, be the best at it. Don't go halfway. You have to go all in. So that was the first thing. We don't believe in participation medals. That's not a thing. And if you arrive second, you're the first one to lose. So that was the one thing. Like, I can't get second. I have to get first place. Competitive nature side, those that know me, even at a board game, have my game face on. And so the second thing was, is that racism, ageism, sexism, those are issues you're going to have to deal with. But it is not an excuse for you to not be successful. Which then later on came the third one, was mediocrity is just simply not acceptable. And being average was not something that our household permitted. Finally, and this was the one that I live by, I live by, and it's pretty much inherited, was the final concept. And it was more of, you cannot shy away from a challenge. You have to face it on. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that one. When you execute constantly and make it a habit to face on a challenge, it creates a little bit of a disorder, OK? And, but we're not going to talk about my disorders today. That's going to take another topic and more than 20 minutes. What we are going to talk about today is how those four building blocks really hardwired myself on what I did, what I do now, and allowed me to create the opportunities. I've heard a lot of times that opportunities just land, I'm lucky. It's none of those. I create my opportunities, and I owe my mother for that. And so jumping into college, uh, I chose to choose art, education, and then gear up. Let me jump into the first beast, which is art. I didn't do much of my research when I decided to study art. I'm in Kansas, right? Not a very wise choice. But not only that, I'm in a contemporary era, which you can pretty much call anything art in today's world. But that's not just it. I was among a field where life is messy. You need to love it. That's not me. Life is messy. You clean it. You organize it. You color code it. And then I just want straight A's. Okay? That was what I wanted. <laughs> That wasn't the field I was in. It was easier to get A's in my calculus classes than to get an A in art school, which was hard for my brother to believe because he just thought I was coloring in college. So um, I decided to take that beast on. And then shortly after I graduated, I launched my business degree while still working full time, doing my master's degree. Again, I don't operate very in a sane, logical manner. And the moment I feel that I start becoming a bit comfortable, and I don't feel an adrenaline of a challenge, then I say, OK, what can I, what can I face more? And at the time, I was working with Kansas Kids at Gear Up, which led into the educational world. And Kansas Kids at Gear Up is, uh, the acronym is Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. Now, that's a long word. It's a federally funded program. But really, what we're doing is just getting kids into college. But here is the kicker. We are a unique program because we're national, but Kansas kids, we just deal with foster care kids, which right now in Kansas, it's increasing close to 6,000 kids in, that are in foster care. And this specific area, we serve 550. So I stepped into a role shortly after coordinating this area, and there was a lot of obstacles thrown at me. I was the youngest coordinator at the table. My age hindered a lot of the advice or suggestions I brought to the table because most of the women that were sitting at the table had 30 plus years in education. And so here comes somebody that undergraduate degree or no education within the, no actual credentials within the educational world. And I had a master's. Quote, none of them had a master's. 
but they didn't see that relevant to what I was doing. And so I had that constantly question me and I had to work twice as hard. Well, fast forward two years later, I was leading a team that finally our program, we were able to meet all, every single goal. My director had told me that that had never happened in her whole 30 plus year experience as a director for this specific program. Our goals were a bit ambitious and they were just considered a bit impossible. The two ones that constantly fell through were the fact that 80% of our students that are engaged seniors had to complete their FAFSA. Pretty simple, right? But if you're dealing with foster care and they're jumping all around, it becomes a bit of an obstacle. The second one was that 70% of your seniors were going to apply to college, uh, actually submit an application. And this past academic year when we ran the results, our region we were so ecstatic that we met every, every single one of them, above 80%, above 70%. That's because I was fortunate enough to have that master's education that Friends University provided. And it really kicked in on how I operated my team. Operated like a business. Again, most people operate more in the educational sense because they don't operate business, the educational world into a business setting. But then came the issues with my culture. When I had my direct supervisor right now ask me, okay, so what's the next challenge? Because she, she knows how I was wired. I was getting comfortable with my position. I was coasting, and I said, well, I don't know. What is the next challenge? Like, do you want to learn how to write a grant? I was like, yeah. Sounds boring. But <laughs> okay. And she did so. And so we, this uh, past summer, we wrote the grant to expand Gear Up. And now I am proud to say from last week, the Department of Education has funded an $8 million grant for the next seven years, and we're going to be serving Hayesville District Schools. And so that was a huge accomplishment. But throughout trials, uh, let me give you a little bit a story when I went to DC to present to, for this grant. Um, I was sitting down, and my director had left to go get some snacks, and I was just reviewing some of the policies. Well, I had a gentleman approach me and say, ma'am, do you belong here? And the first thing that came to mind, either I'm going to be defensive and politely just dismiss him. But my humor side kicked in and I said, well, they told me there was going to free, be free food here and pinatas. Am I not at the right place? <laughs> and so he's like, ma'am, and he was more serious, of course. I mean, these people in DC, I'm not kidding. They're a bit uptight. And they're like, ma'am, are you sure you're, you're where you need to be? And I was like, yes, sir. I'm here when I need to be. Thank you. And then Corrine comes, which is my director comes walking towards me and she's like, is everything okay? It's like, yeah, he leaves. And I was like, don't worry about it. It's like, I had my white person token leave and this is what happens. And so that ended up going into more of a bigger obstacle for me, which was the balance. I was still doing art. I had some shows with Final Friday. I was still doing commissions. I was very invested in my program. I was all in and at the same time, I wanted to create more awareness of what was going on in Kansas on a national level. So I engaged with the organization, which is Educational Opportunity Association, and I wanted to talk more about the issues. I wouldn't settle with excuses that it's impossible, it's really hard. You tell me it's really hard and then I'm gonna go for it. Again, I'm not very sane, so I go for that type of stuff. And that balance, as much as I read self books and strategies, they didn't help. Let me tell you what did help. It was my animal pack. Let me tell you a secret. So everybody know, who knows me knows I'm a squirrel, which I relate to it because if you see squirrels, you think they're on crack, going from one place to the next. You know, there's a little bit of resemblance there. And my animal pack, if you saw it visually, you can see that, or the first thought that you would say is, those are a bunch of misfits that probably got rejected in their own animal pack and then created one. You, I mean, I have the most diverse animal pack. There's an elephant, there's a lion, there's a bear, there's a dolphin, there's a platypus, there's an otter, there's a horse, there's a shark. I had to, have, I had to cover my whole basis because if I was going to navigate waters, I need to get a shark. And if I was going to navigate in land and I had to have the big ones because squirrel doesn't do much damage, I had to have my, my elephant. And so I also had to have my owl for wisdom. And those are all things that I constantly started collecting. And honestly, this is what kept me sane with all the diversity of having to challenge other issues within my age, having to challenge the issues that came up front within my culture and gender, especially with being a woman in these specific fields and going to DC where 98% of them are white male. 
and which throughout this whole process, I had my director of my MBA program, Michelle Case, approach me. She's like, hey, it's like, I have something interesting. And I was like, yeah. I was like, she just had to say I have a little challenge. She just had to say I have a challenge. And I'm like, my ear perked up. I'm like, what? What's the challenge? She's like, well, I want to start this organization on campus, Namba. I was like, okay. And I'm like, do you have a plan? No. Okay. Do you have a team? No. Okay. Like, challenge accepted. And so, I dived in with Michelle, we started getting our team, had a bit of bumps on the road, and right now we're in our third year for National Women's Association with MBAs, and Friends University has been recognized more on a national level. So those are all the accomplishments, but I would not have been able to do it without my animal pack. Again, you can study, read as many self-help books, but if you don't have that animal pack to help execute them, you're pretty much on a very, you're, that's a very lonely place to be and it's twice as hard. And so I want to wrap up with being able to show you that it really goes back to perspective. Most minorities sometimes are so focused on what happens to them. And this is not a feel sorry for me. It's more of let's talk about it. These are still relevant issues. I know that the moment I walk into a room, I'm being judged. You probably think that I like Patron, which is true, but there's other stereotypes that go into it, right? And there's a lot of stereotypes that I do break. I'm Hispanic, I don't have kids, I'm 30 years old, I should have had like my little football team by this point, and it's not the case. And those stereotypes are the ones that we need to be talking about because they're constantly still, and not just within my ethnicity, with any ethnicity that happens, and as much that you're tired of hearing about this, it's usually the ones that are doing it that are tired, not the ones that are participating in it. And, but it's how we choose to react to those situations. We can either put a pity party and feel sorry for ourselves, or we can just overcome it, and then being able to show them, show up, and that that's not the case. So I want to finalize with my little ICT squirrel that this is who I am. I'm here, Wichita. I finally am able to embrace it because I think that if I'm able to overcome any adversity within the Midwest, then the East Coast and West Coast is just going to be a piece of cake. So I just want to thank Wichita for pretty much putting any possible obstacle through because we're pretty much still trying to move progressively and it feels like we're on a bandwagon rather than trying to go full speed. And so I'm hoping that with, in today's leaders and communities, we've gotten better at being able to rise to the call and being able to step up. And so this is a progress today, and I want to thank you all for coming here.